quick tutorial on how to make a low poly mesh terrain like this one in Blender. I'll also be showing you how to apply some very basic colouring through Vertex Paint, as you can see in this example. This is what the final result could look like in Godot. Of course, I did add some trees and some buildings, and some other elements which add detail to the terrain. And of course, this is part of my level 1 gameplay for Meteor Golf, which you can try in Itch.io if you want. However, the mesh that I'll be making will be much simpler and should serve as a proper example for how to make a low poly mesh in Blender and export it to Godot. First, let's create a new project. Delete the default cube, camera, and light. And now, Shift A and create a new mesh plane. Scale it up as much as you need. For example, 10 meters in the X and Y axis. Next, go to edit mode and make sure you have the plane selected. Now go to edge, subdivide, and display the subdivide options in number of cuts. Add as many as you want, for example, 50. And this will be your base plane. Now go to sculpt mode. Remember, you can change your mode either by pressing the tab or going to the top left and selecting the sculpt mode. This will give us a few sculpting options. This is the base draw brush. You can increase or decrease the radius and increase or decrease the strength. With this brush, you can increase or decrease height. This is another useful brush that smoothens out whatever you select. Okay, let's say this is what we want, and now we could hop onto Vertex Paint. With this option we can actually add weights to the vertices, so that each vertice will have an influence on the colour that the face will have. For example, so we can select the brownish colour and start painting. Obviously this colouring technique is very basic, but it's really quick and it gives you a very specific art style to the game.
as a small advice for coloring, keep adding different shades of the same colors in order to give the 3D look a bit more depth. Keep in mind you can actually modify the sculpting of this mesh even if you've already added vertex paint information to the vertices. Well, I did what I could considering the limitations of the technique. However, I also changed the color schemes, as you can see, to make the colors more refined to level 1. As an extra tip, our mesh is currently formed by quads, so basically the squares, and we might want to make it formed by triangles, which would give us a different aesthetic for our low poly terrain. To do that, go to edit mode and change to Face select mode and select all the faces. Make sure you don't leave any out. And then control T. And you'll see that's giving us a different approach to our low poly terrain. However, I'll actually control Z and leave it as quads because I actually like it more that way. Now let's see the export options for exporting this terrain to Godot. Go to export and we have various options here. We're going to concentrate on either the OBG format or the GLTF format. GLTF format is actually a binary format that is very clean and should work much better with Godot. However, currently even up to Godot 4, it's not possible to load the vertex paint data into Godot. So we will be forced to use OBG for now. What's most probable is that once they get the vertex paint fixed for GLTF or GLB, the process will likely be quite similar to loading the vertex paint data in Godot with OBG. So let's just select OBG. And as for the settings, all we need is normals and colors in the geometry section. Nothing else, really. Just make sure the up axis is Y, because in Godot the up axis is Y. And forwards, forwards axis is minus Z, which is already okay. By the way, when you're exporting your model, make sure you export it in a Godot folder. So that way you'll have it accessible from the engine directly, and you won't have to move it later. In my case, I already exported this model once, so I'll just overwrite the terrain level to B OBG that I already did. And that should be it. Now let's hop on to Godot. Okay, so now in Godot, you'll notice I changed the terrain level to OBG name slightly to make it shorter. And I placed it in the 3D models exported meshes folder. I also made a level two scene 
which is the scene I'm going to place my terrain mesh on and added a 3D node as its root node and two normal nodes that are only going to be structural nodes. We can drag and drop the terrain onto the scene and we'll actually get to see it. We will notice the vertex paint is missing. So in order to add that, we go to the mesh section, click on the mesh and in surface zero, you'll see there is no material. So we'll have to add a geometry material override, add a new standard material 3D. Open this material in the vertex color section, use as albedo. And there we go. You'll notice the lighting is very uniform for the mesh. So we're going to add a child node camera 3D. Place it properly. If it's pointing in the right direction, we should be able to see how this looks in play mode. Actually, I think it's the other way around. By the way, if you don't see the gizmo for the camera and other editor elements, go here to these three dots and make sure view gizmos is active. Click the play current scene button, which is this button here. And you'll see that there is no lighting for this mesh when we're playing the game. And that's because we didn't add any light or environment. So we're going to do that now. Add a new child node. Search for environment. We can place this in the environment node. And now we can add a light. Which would be a directional light 3D. Move the light up a bit. And notice the arrow on it. So just rotate it and make it face as you wish. Now go to world environment and in environment create a new environment. Click on it and in the background section, mode sky. We're just going to create a quick procedural sky. So that will give us the lighting that we need in sky. Create a new sky. Now you can click it and in sky material create a new procedural sky material. If we click it, we'll see that there is a bunch of new options. For the procedural sky material, I went ahead and copied some of the values from my level one. There's other options that you can look at. You can also go to the directional light and tweak the energy, for example. You could set it to 0.5 or 0.75. Go to the tone map section and set it to filmic. Then put the white value to 16. Click the local space button in order to rotate the camera in local space. And click preview to see a preview without actually hitting play. Well, with this technique, this is what I managed to do. But I'd like to show you my level one, which I actually put a lot more effort into and show you what you could maybe manage if you start tweaking your lighting, environment, color. Thank you for watching my tutorial. Please leave a like on the video and subscribe for more content like this. See ya.